I'm Dr. Lenore Walker, and I'm here with our COVID IPV group. We're part of the American Psychological Association, and we meet every Thursday on a round table where we share ideas about how to survive this horrible virus together. Um, we're all psychologists uh, and um, our goal has been to help mental health professionals and just the average person be able to deal with some new techniques that we have to learn um, as we learn to keep ourselves and our patients and clients safe. So today we are very excited. We have several of our members who are on um, right now. I'll introduce them and then um, we'll have some more who will be joining us. And then we'll have, uh, we'll start off um, with uh, Dr. Eileen Serland, who's going to talk to us a little bit about some ideas of what to do during the holiday season as we get ready. Uh, and then all of us are going to jump in, including you. I hope you do. If you're on um, Zoom, please join us. If you're on Facebook, uh, we'll be watching to see if you type in um, any comments and we'll try to get to your comments and questions and discussion. Um, so we'll make this hour one that's useful for all of us. So right now, um, Dr. Giselle Gaveria is coming to us. It looks like she's in a separate town, but she really is in Florida. Um, I'm Dr. Lenore Walker, and I'm here in Florida as well. And we have Dr. Marilyn Saffer, who is in Haifa, Israel. Um, we usually have some others who will join on from all over the world. So you'll see when they come. Here comes um, Dr. Michaela uh, Mendelson, who's coming from Boston. Uh, and of course, Dr. Eileen Cern Serlin, who is our um, person who's going to set us, um, start us off uh, in some things that uh, she's got some good ideas. Um, Dr. Serlin is from San Francisco, California. So we're all over the, the United States and the globe uh, right now. And, and um, we have some others joining, I'm sure, uh, from other places as well. So with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Dr. Serlin, who's going to start us off. But keep your questions, thoughts, ideas coming because we're going to have a discussion afterwards. So go ahead, Dr. Serlin. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Walker. And um, I so appreciate being on these roundtables. Uh, as I understood it, the theme for today was how to prepare for the holidays, how to get ready for the holidays. So I've been thinking about it really since I heard about that theme. And what my thoughts about the holidays have been since I also am um, participating in COVID. I haven't left the house for eight months. So what, what do we do about our usual um, ways of marking the holidays? And what are we going to do as the holidays come up? So I'd like to first share, I made a little PowerPoint um, and then prepared some questions for us to think about. So I'm going to share the screen here. Let's see, can you see it? Everything. Can you see this? Okay, good. So holidays with COVID and uh, this is the task force. I started uh, you know, understanding that my first thought was holidays. What are the local holidays? And then I began to think about where other people live and what their holidays were. And I just started looking up holidays that are coming up in the next few months. And these were just, as you can see, um, some of the very um, uh, most recently mentioned ones. There was a long list of holidays from various countries, but these are some of the ones coming up in the next few months. You can see All Saints Day, Halloween. 
excuse me, I think I'm going to have to um, Okay. Uh, and, and I looked at what are some of the themes that they have in common. And just to begin thinking about kind of some of the um, across the board themes that we're dealing with. Uh, some are agricultural that has to do with this time of the year. Um, many countries around the world are dealing with, depending upon what time of year, uh, where in the globe we are planting or harvesting. Um, what other uh, ideas come during the holidays has to do with family, community, uh, has to do with important events coming up, uh, births, deaths, weddings, has to do with tradition, with uh, repeating certain key moments to teach the children to bring communities together, has to do with the seasons, what do you do in the cold, uh, what do you do in the hot? It has to do with lighting, light and darkness. Uh, for some of us, it's going to be the darkest time of the year and lighting candles and so forth, ways to deal with the coming darkness. And uh, also for that, it's also the more time indoors, often a turn inward from being out in the world more. These are some of the general themes I found. I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of ritual. Um, during COVID, most of our everyday's rituals break down. We find new schedules. We all do what we can to eat, sleep, work, normal things. Rituals are different. They're bigger. They're celebrated by uh, whole families, tribes, communities, uh, and they mark certain things. Uh, one of the most important are life stages, birth, death, um, marriage, birthdays. So they help orient us to different stages of our life. What else do rituals do? They celebrate family. They connect individuals to community. They orient us to the natural world, whether we're gathering leaves in the autumn, whether we are uh, seeing the new buds come out in the springtime. Um, Importantly, psychologically, they express and transform emotions. I know there are some recently that have come up about grieving, communal losses and grief, the day of the dead. Together, there are ways we can process our emotions. And finally, I like reach for transcendence because they can lift us above our everyday concerns and we can glimpse something bigger, hopefully hope, optimism, a sense of the future. Now, what happens in COVID? We are disconnected from nature. We're often disconnected from family. We have disembodied communication. We can't touch, we can't hug. Um, we are staring at screens. We're using only our eyes, not our other senses. We can't run, jam, jump, dance, and we suffer from Zoom fatigue, some of us. So, how do we then, in this condition, find a way to still mark the importance of the holiday? So I've been thinking about that and then thinking about in my own life, what do I do? Because literally I hardly leave the house. So as I was reflecting on what I can do and what we can do, I wanna make a plug here for the importance of creativity, resilience, and the imagination at times when we're going to have to use these functions to help us get out of the, the little hole we happen to be in. So one way, I'm going to name these, and then I have a few examples. We can transform the space. We can decorate our rooms. Very important people to bring in flowers from the outside or light candles or change, the, um, change something in your house so it's not the same every day, every day. Absolutely bring in the light, a lot of candlelight going on. People are stringing lights outside their houses, bringing in the light as it's getting darker. I wrote produce and not consume. We can't go out and buy by the way we used to, but we read about lots more people are, um, are making their own food, making their own bread, doing crafts with the children, um, making things together somewhat the way we used to. And, uh, I've been 
crocheting, which when I sit in front of the screen really helps my hands do something, but it feels like I'm making things and using my hands. People are cooking a lot, baking a lot, tactile senses to keep us connected to the, to the, uh, the real reality of the world. Uh, we find ways to connect. For most of us, it's on Zoom. People are finding all kinds of creative ways to connect and Zoom parties and Zoom events. Finally, I wrote Be Silly because if we don't take ourselves with some sense of humor, it's gonna be even harder. So how do we use all these and create some sorts of forms to commemorate the different holidays, the meaning of the holidays and share them? As I was thinking about this, I was just on a walk the other day and I thought, let me see what's right in my own neighborhood as a start. So here are some photos as I was taking some scary ones. I mean, many of us are thinking, well, in my childhood, we trick or treated, but nobody can trick or treat now. It's not safe. We can't go out of our houses. Candy's not safe, et cetera, et cetera. But look at the decorations that are going on right in the neighborhood. Walk around, discovery is important. Notice new things. Community connections. So I had, this is, I'll talk about him later. Um, I don't have any children living here. I don't see my own grandchildren very much, but there's a little boy next door named Nick. I can say that. He helped me put up a spider and I did it not because I need a spider on this wall here, there's his mom, but just to do something with him. And we've become great friends, Nick and I, over these holidays. He's right next door. Here's some beautiful, um, the foliage changes in the fall. And finally, there is here a, a community art project that's going on. Uh, people knit and are decorating all the trees and there's, this is in our downtown area, and there's little signs about what, what people are bringing and what they mean. So there are efforts and artists are creating efforts to bring communities together and cheer us all up. So I have one more uh, share that I would like to do. And this is a message from Nick. And he wants to say to everybody, here's Nick. And here's what he says. Happy Halloween. I hope you could hear that. I'll come back from screen share. So those are some of my reflections on holidays, meaning what we miss, what we can do. And I thought maybe just if you're interested, I would just invite you all to think about, even if you want to close your eyes for a second and just remember some favorite moments from holidays that you come up when you think of the word holidays, October, November, December coming up. Remember a few things from childhood, your favorite things. You might want to write them down. And then think about ways you can find in today's world to find a way to express that or bring it into your life. And that could be the start of a discussion. So that's my reflections on holidays for today. That's lovely. Thank you. There are ways to think about holidays. For me, when I think, I think about people. I don't think so. It feels so empty for me now, but you've given me a new way to look. Thank you, Eileen. That's um, really helpful. Um, I, I'm used to, you know, in, in where we live, we have a Halloween party every year. We dress up in costumes. Yes. Um, Maybe we'll dress up in a costume just for ourselves. That well, just might be fun. I, I had to remind everybody I put on my pumpkins for the occasion. <laughs> I love it. Little thing. Little I, thing. I do. Um, 
In, in fact, uh, I remember one Halloween where we were traveling and we wore little witches hats on the airport <laughs> and we had the best time <laughs> being silly. So being I think silly. being silly is, is very, very important. And um, being with little ones, I know we miss our little ones so much and our big, we have big, big children too that we miss. And, um, you know, uh, uh, we're gonna, have to find ways to do things uh, a little bit differently. We'll certainly do Zoom calls um, because that's the way we, our family's been getting together. How about some other people? I can share with you um, one of the villages on the Carmel um, that has a large Druze community had a great deal of uh, COVID and in part because of the large um, celebrations, especially marriages. And the mayor went around to each uh, community, asked the religious community to have small meetings. And now for weddings, say, which might have five or 600 people coming for uh, a wedding, they set it up so that 20 people can come. Because right now the temperature is 80 degrees during the day and not lower than 70 at night. So everything is outside, of course. And people come for 20 minutes, 20 people. They leave in the next 20 people. And they brought down the um, COVID in the community so that it's no longer a red community. It's a green community. So mm, that wow. is the operation. And this, they're doing the same for the various celebrations that's all set up and the people are working together to um, keep down the influx because it was really very significantly rising in that community. Mm. Very interesting because that's really where some of the real hot spots are with the communities that are used to getting together in large groups. Mm -hmm often religious groups as well. Well, it's kind of interesting because you still have groups getting together and they have to cooperate among themselves to decide which group is coming. So um, an interaction and the cooperation within the community is being established that is much greater than anything that happened uh, before. Mm. And I would imagine this will have a positive effect of carrying over once people can more or less return to normal, this integral cooperation. Great. Very smart way of dealing with it, I think. Yes. Yeah. And they still experience the togetherness. Right. Certainly not have to be on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, as, 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 uh, we think about some of the joy and the and the um, of a, of the holidays with people. Um, our group, particularly since we're dealing with interpersonal violence, um, know that holidays is also a time where there's an uptick on um, people who are hurting one another. Um, families are not always um, the warm uh, groups that we. Uh, would like them to be in that, uh, in our imaginations, we believe that they are. And so I think we have to, as we prepare for the holidays, we have to prepare for the problems that may occur and how to protect ourselves um, and protect uh, other people uh, from some of the problems that can happen. Certainly, I think about um, how in, in even my own, um, uh, family, we need to watch how much alcohol we serve because the more alcohol that's um, there, some people can't hold their alcohol as well as others. And that is, is a problem. And so we're, we um, deliberately limit um, what we put out. So it's not like we don't have anything, but we don't have enough um, uh, that we hope. <laughs> Will, will make that much of a difference. So these are things that we have to think about ways to do that. Um, as well as, you know, Dr. Walker on some of the things you're saying, uh, mocktails. 
mm -hmm. uh, creating fruit juices in a martini glass or changing it up a little bit. I know that they're using different types of spices and mm -hmm. reducing it or ciders and so forth and so on. I know that's been a trend as well. Right, eggnog and fruit juices all, all can, um, can be done um, that way. So, and not mixing. We find not mixing different kinds. If you're going to serve wine, you just serve wine. If you're going to serve um, alcohol, you don't mix too many different kinds because sometimes that can be a problem as well. And in, in uh, especially as as uh, in young people or people as they get older. So, these are some ideas. I just to go back. I, I was just remembering it was actually a, a place for diet where they were trying to encourage people to eat less uh, <laughs> and and the role of creativity here and it actually makes a difference what you serve it in so the, the point is again the imagination so just to drink um uh, a fruit juice may not be all that special but if you if you decorate it or serve it in a martini glass or you serve it in a tiny exactly. glass so you're <laughs> drinking less but you feel like you're drinking more so the psychological impact of specialness, of creativity, of using color, of making it special is actually as, as important as what you're drinking. Excellent. And that, I think that's true for food too. Um, you know, uh, um, I, I come from a family where more is better. <laughs> so um, nobody should ever leave your, your table hungry. And so we always have so much food. Um, and then of course people fall asleep afterward. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think about all the men, especially, you know, while the women are busy cleaning up and today that's not true anymore. Men have to be in the kitchen as well as the women. But when I was growing up, that was, was very traditional and the men would go into the living room and just sit on the sofa and plots and then they would be fast asleep. Um, so that, that can kill a good party too. <laughs> I was going to say that I think that communication and communicating about expectations is going to be especially important this year okay. within families and also between families um, in terms of being able to kind of plan for what is possible, but also, you know, so many where families do get together for the holidays, families often have really are going to have very different levels of comfort with doing that or how that's done or and that, you know, I think that that's in a general way, I think that communication is going to be really important. Being able to set boundaries, um, being able to have difficult conversations about what feels comfortable, what doesn't feel comfortable. That's a good point, Michaela. What do we do if somebody walks in without a mask? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Just what I was trying to imagine is something as simple as a mask. Can. Yeah. And then fueled by alcohol, can there's people are fighting and punching each other over these things. I mean, because the resentment has been building up for a long time. It's not just one event. So some little thing can trigger simmering anger that's been going on for a long. People are taking their frustrations out on each other that might not even be about each other. But yeah. Exactly. Well, one of the things that could, they can do is at least, hey, if you're coming over the house, we are laying out some boundaries or some things of that sort. Um, noticing that the windows will be closed, I mean open, uh, throughout the house that the air is ventilating or if they're able to do it outside, masks must be worn. Or some people are going as far as if you're going to come over my house, please get COVID tested or isolate there's a lot of children being born as well and also the older adults. And I know some people have actually uh, purchased. You're, you're muted. You're muted. muted. Yeah, it's okay. sort of jumping. Um, some people are buying heaters um, uh, as it gets a little bit colder so that they can still have um, parties or dinners out back in their patios um, and stay warm. And so uh, that's maybe an option for some people uh, to borrow or to buy, purchase um, 
uh, something like that so that it allows you to continue a larger, if you're having a larger gathering outside rather than in the house. And some people have developed what they call pods of people. These are like neighbors that have made an agreement that they are only going to socialize with the people in this particular group. So if everybody stays that way and does not go out um, uh, of that group and they're all safe, then they should be able to be without a mask and to be safe. And of course, you can't wear a mask and eat and drink. Um, uh, I've tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> but sometimes you're just sort of sitting there and you know, pull, pick up a glass to your mouth. And it's like, oh, this isn't working. <laughs> uh, shows how, how much of a habit we, we have. Uh, I see Patricia has just... Uh, joined us, uh, Dr. Villavicencio is, is uh, here from Madrid, Spain. So we are very international. She's, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry for being late, I've been driving home. We saw you in the car with a mask on. We were yes. Very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> And sorry for missing part of your presentation. And uh, I've been thinking, what should I do this Halloween? I love to celebrate Halloween and uh, prepare poison apples to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I stick um, uh, some candies in it. Oh, and I do this trick. So, oh, look at the witch in this. <laughs> I have so much fun. And kids, they are all biological apples and no, no sweets. <laughs> I also buy, you know, very expensive stuff for them. Uh, I'm so sorry that they, they won't be ringing at my door. But I could do something in my backyard to, yes, you know, I don't know what should I do. But Make a big pumpkin. <laughs> yes, that, I, I, I do I that. A big so maybe and fill it with candies and people can just take. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. I leave it at my doorstep or uh, outside my yard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do I was that. thinking about doing that. Although we uh, usually have children uh, uh, coming around our building, so they do. You People do have, have children coming pumpkins, or not? Uh, little little buckets, pumpkins outside their door with candies. Right, right. I actually For brought up to Nick. I brought some candies. I didn't wait till Halloween. My the uh, <laughs> you all too. I bought. A little, I did this for my grandchildren actually. And when we dropped off food, we delivered it. I wrote their names on little pumpkins, oh. made little pictures, but for the child, having their name on a little pumpkin. That's so cute. Oh. They enjoyed oh. that. They felt very Maybe I could do that for my neighbor's kids and do yeah. like a special bag for each of them. Yeah. So they won't grab the, the candy by, the, by themselves. Yes, in case, you know, they have Kobe fans. You know, I'm fascinated that you have similar rituals in Spain that we do with Halloween with the candies and the kids. I'm wondering, I know other cultures celebrate the Day of the Dead and other ways yeah. of celebrating. I it's brand new, brand new custom. It's not, it's not been that uh, yeah. popular, but it's been popular since you know, maybe 20 years ago. Are there some traditional um, kind of autumn customs that you would do in Spain? I'm really mm, depending on the on the town and the area, it, it's like uh, the <clears throat> first of the, November is the day of the death also. And yeah. that's in November. So here it's in, in, in um, October. Oh. Oh, that's right. October, September or October. Some, it's oh. 
the, the, the actual celebration. We don't celebrate Halloween. People wear costumes in Purim, which is in the spring. Right. And you don't celebrate Halloween in Israel, do you? But you know, it was very funny when I was in China, they were celebrating Halloween in China. It's actually a great shopping day. Oh, <laughs> I grew, up in, South, I grew up in South Africa. And w when I was growing up, we did not celebrate Halloween. But now that I, you know, just as Patricia was saying that I'd say the last 10 or 15 years, it's become a holiday there as well. Oh, that's oh, interesting. That's funny. <laughs> Michaela, that you celebrated something in the autumn, some equivalent holiday? Well, because the seasons are reversed because it's Southern Hemisphere, it would have been a different time of year. Um, but no, there wasn't really an autumn, an autumn holiday. Is there a harvest day? It's a harvest time, generally, but not necessarily. Like in Florida, it's not harvested. We harvest all the time. And well, <laughs> you have Sukkot, but that's usually in the end of September and October. Right. Autumn harvest, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm curious about Patricia. Sort of. They do a. Oh, I'm so sorry. Day of the Dead. Yeah. I was just uh, going to ask about the Day of the. That's another part of Halloween that we do here. Yeah, we do like we have a free day, so it's a long weekend. And so people celebrate going traveling around, but I don't know if we'll be that possible right now don't people usually go to like their ancestors graves or something like that the day of the dead or they make depends the home with the photos of the people at no the no not not here in madrid but uh, maybe in other parts of the country i cannot tell uh, i could do a research there <laughs> yeah, but people yeah but what people do it's a uh, go to cemeteries and bring flowers uh, huh? it's the time to go and uh, bring flowers to your family members that pass away mm -hmm. yeah, not everyone but you know it's it i think it's the day that people do that or they go and clean the grave or something like that yeah um, we do that between between um, the Jewish New Year, between Rosh Hashanah and the Yom Kippur, we go to the cemetery and we say prayers or bring, mm. bring flowers, but we bring stones. Uh, oh, really? I don't quite understand what, what the... Because so they're permanent. In the grave. Ah. Yes. They symbolize permanence. I mean, stones. yes, correct. Many people have come by the number of stones that are left on the on the, on the gravestone. That's interesting. I never understood ah. why I just did it. I it was one of the That's things. What ritual is? <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's the way to show show off how many relatives have been visiting you. <laughs> so just in case you want to leave a, a stone for me, bring many. <laughs> <laughs> so I could show off, you know, after that. <laughs> I have as many friends and family visiting to me. <laughs> I will pay for this. <laughs> what about Thanksgiving? You know, um, in, I'm, I'm sorry, Lori isn't with us from Canada because they had the Thanksgiving, I think, last weekend. Um, and we have ours next month. Um, yeah. Another holiday where there's lots of food oh. and family. Um, it's, fa it's like Christmas. And I guess it's Christmas. Right. I have to bring right? something uncomfortable, which is it's being looked at. And so is Columbus oh. Day as, as not kind to the indigenous people. Mm. So now we're inventing new kinds of holidays that respect that don't respect mm. Columbus, for example, or or talk about the Native Americans who perished, you know, during Thanksgiving. Mm. So I think people are getting more politically aware about the holidays. Yeah. Well, that's how very more interesting. Respectful, more respectful wonder, of different cultures. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen with Thanksgiving this year. Yeah. Uh, many many people celebrated uh, what used to have been Columbus Day as the day of, for Indigenous peoples. Yes. Yeah. In, in and, the United States. But in Latin America, it's really taking a hold. Um, 
el Día de las Razas, which is the indigenous people, and they're really taking a hold of that in Colombia and Guatemala. Um, I was recently in Colombia and I was able to see all these parades that were happening and marches to the capital, seeking um, some kind of justice for their people. Mm -hmm. I, I think also in Peru, they do, mm -hmm. they celebrate Correct. the Dia de las Razas. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I think it should be also a, a time for reconciliation and, and in a way of paying respect to something that was wrong many, many, many years ago. And thanks to that, make sure and... Um, we are part of that, you know, that continent. I think that's very, right. yeah, that's a nice way so, to look at it. We can still celebrate, um, but we celebrate differently than, than and respect actually. with respect and yeah. Yeah. compassion. They say the, uh, I'm more or less vegetarian. So, what do we do on Thanksgiving turkey? Yes. Yeah, you have tofu, tofu, turkey, and big, big on the vegetables, the gourds and the squashes and the, I always prefer the stuffing anyway, stuffing with cranberries and. It sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, now I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> what time is that there? Already almost one, you right? Know, that brings up and I'm really curious. Um, uh, you know, favorite relatives. What did your aunt make on Thanksgiving, for example? Who's, you know, did you go to somebody's house or what special foods did you make in your countries? Well, you, one of the things that I think, you know, we talk about celebration. This is a, a year that I'm living on my own. I contact with my um, grandkids and my family that lives in five which is a wonderful thing that multiple talks uh, with a number of people. It's a bit different than Zoom, but still um, celebrating the holidays when you're on your own is, is a bit different than um, even if you're living with one other person. Um, Absolutely. So how are you going to make it fun for yourself, Marilyn? I hadn't really thought about it before we started. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that happens, I have a, a dog, a Shih Tzu, that likes people and we go out often and she loves the kids and the kids love her and so you know we have interactions outside in the playground with the kids um, mm. uh, playing with her i watch my distance because young children can be carriers without showing any symptoms All right um she's very happy you know to interact with them I hadn't really thought about it. I think I'll try and make some kind of arrangement with some friends um, to have some kind of meetings or, um, fortunately my apartment is such, I have a, a large terrace and I can open windows so that it's not a problem. Mm. Yeah, that would be perfect. Mm. Marilyn, I'd like to say I, I admire your resilience, but as a therapist, I hear from people who don't have that, who are alone mm -hmm. and really are lonely on these times and don't have resources to you know, connect with others or haven't thought about ways. So I'm seeing upticks and we usually, maybe we should talk about depression during the holidays because that is pretty common in so many places. And now there's gonna be so much isolation and you know that would uh, probably a wonder uh, be a wonderful topic to talk about in the next couple of sessions for us to be able to discuss that. Um, I, I must say that many patients that I have hate Christmas time, for example, yeah. how many times because they've been through abuse uh, and many 
difficulties during those times. So many people have a very hard time to get together with their family, own family. Mm -hmm. I think some people are going to be happier this, mm. this time because they don't have to go travel to their family. That's yeah. the other side. <laughs> <laughs> For some people, this may be a relief uh, as well. So, uh, sure. Trisha. Right. Um, I am going to have to hop off of this today, but I'm leaving everybody else. I uh, just want to say, I'm sorry, I have to leave, but unfortunately I double booked myself. Um, I'll try not to do it again. Um, so uh, everybody next week, but uh, Giselle will, will um, take over for me, uh, as everybody will, of course. We'll so, miss bye. you. Bye. 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 Thank you for bye. coming. <laughs> So I really do think that a good topic of discussion would be uh, depression during this time as well, because mm -hmm. uh, amongst COVID and the losing of family members, some of us either celebrating the holidays alone or without a loved one. As good time. As most of us know, my mother passed away about a month and a half ago, and it, I feel like I'm t carrying on the torch of decorating. Granted, I've been doing it for the last several years, but to holding that position to decorate, to continue some of the traditions, some of the family traditions. You know, Giselle, yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that. And I'm thinking that in my family, somehow, I, I, there's kind of one in every generation, I think, who steps up to continue the traditions. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see. I didn't expect I would be the one. My mother was the glue. Yes. Mm. And, uh, but but and a lot of the young people don't see the need until they're really older or you know get them so so it's interesting but some of them seem to have a uh, as you do uh, an understanding of the importance of carrying on traditions and you know one of the things i had started doing in the past like five years is i started collecting pictures of every christmas from dating back to 83 82 and at least one picture to signify that year and Christmas. And I've been oh, nice. making ornaments throughout the tree and it's actually <laughs> photographies wow. of, of our pets throughout the years of just happy moments that we've had as a family. Because mm -hmm. I, I do really feel like it's a moment also to see the blessings that we've had in over the years. <laughs> Granted, other individuals are not there anymore. That's one of it's the traditions. Nice. So nice I have tradition. one of my significant other and I starting our, our own little tree, and then I have my family tree, which is about nine foot. <laughs> That's a great example of creativity, just what we were talking about, and that we have resources you know, to do and in one, a new way. One of some of the other things that I've been doing as well, um, I don't know, for children, I don't know, when you an individuals start decorating, is I, I, I make a gratitude. I know that we had a session on, in regards to gratitude, but I start making gratitude chains and having 10 things that they're grateful throughout the year and start adding them, mm. and put it around the tree mm. as well, or and an ideal self, I wish. Chains. You know, like when you grab a sheet of paper and yeah. then you go like this, but obviously it's thinner sheets of paper. Little ribbons connected. Yeah, little ribbons. You're creating little yeah. ribbons and making it a chain of paper. Oh, great idea, great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a moment for all of us to be very creative and maybe we could share share this in in our Facebook page. You know, ways to uh, celebrate and, I was and remember you know, to change. And, Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so, so our committee that I'm normally on is about arts and creativity and yeah. And, um, there are some websites that I would going to also post in the little slide there. Maybe I can put them in, um, just post them after we can post them. There are some organizations, arts organizations, that are full of suggestions about what to do with your kids, what you can create, things I would Wonderful. never have. So just to get, the, to get the imagination going, because a lot of people are creating all kinds of things with their kids. But most of us don't really have the imagination to think, of all the things we could be doing, using natural objects, pine cones, things you find around the house, yeah. Yeah. And maybe also, if, 
uh, we could do something for people that are by themselves. And if we know if somebody's uh, having you know a hard time in our neighborhood and bringing them something to cheer them up. Love. I don't know. I think yes. it will be creating a new schedule for continuation of the roundtables. And I think some of these ideas that we're talking about would be wonderful to have over the, mm. over the time. Yes, wonderful. I'm actually going to need to jump off the call because I have a, another appointment coming right up. But thank, thank you, you for coming, Michaela. Nice Bye. seeing you. Again. Take care, everybody. Take care. Thank you, Eileen, uh, for such a wonderful presentation and uh, really starting to get in our mind rolling on things that we should be doing. Terrific. Terrific. I really invite all the listeners. I really meant that when I was thinking about it. I just wanted to share with you what started me thinking about it. I was walking down the street and you know how when you step on a leaf that's um, fallen down, you get mm -hmm. crunchy sounds? It reminded me of a kid of raking the leaves in the fall and my father and um, walking to school and hearing the leaves crunch under the foot. So, so I'm just going to invite everybody to think of the sounds and the smells and the cooking and all the things associated with holidays. And because I'm so, um, notice Zoom fatigue so much, we're staring at screens that have no smells, that have no touch, that have no... so the senses and the body and the, all the things that bring life, the color of your background, colors and so forth that make us feel alive again at a time yes. like this. Yes, so uh, grounding techniques. Yeah. Do you have yeah. one of the I'll share with you? In Israel, we don't have autumn. We hardly have spring. Uh, we mostly have summer and sort of winter um, mm -hmm. because we don't um we don't have the chill that that's the thing that i miss the most in israel is the autumn you mm -hmm. were talking about walking and crunching the leaves and walking through piles of leaves and apple cider and these kinds of things um but uh i'm just trying to think of how i could recapture those kinds of sounds <laughs> we don't you know uh, have to think about that that's um the autumn leaves drift <laughs> by my window the autumn leaves are little songs and maybe we could do that for you <laughs> and crunch those uh, <laughs> autumn leaves for you and send them it to you <laughs> you know there are some podcasts of individuals who walk the street i don't remember exactly what it is but it's a podcast of uh just a man walking through the city and you hear all the noises all you do is hear the noises of them walking like stepping on uh, stepping on leaves and things like that and there's even a podcast that you can put on podcast or uh youtube videos that you can hear the the fire cracking uh in the uh, in the fireplace yeah so that you know sometimes i I, get, I was getting nostalgic about not being in new york at any time because i tend to go at least once a year so my boyfriend's like you know we can get out we can hop on the subway and i'm like what do you mean hop on the subway and it's a video of somebody who sits on, sits on the subway and you you're basically in the subway and going through the city <sighs> So there's, a, there's plenty that you can do. You can definitely do that. And I bet you they have that in Spain. Um, so you are able to see the outside of, we were what? We were on the D train, mm. being, going, being able to go through the city. Well, as I told you, I look on my wall and I have pictures of things that are occurring in the fall. I have a picture of falling water, the house that Frank Lloyd Wright designed mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania photographed against the foliage of the fall, which I look at all the time. I think I'm going to try to figure out a way, Marilyn, taking a photo. Actually, I, I put a photo on the on the um, little screen share of autumn leaves, of just sending you photos of autumn leaves. And I'm looking at my neighbors. Some of them have, they're a little tacky, you know, the fake autumn leaves. But 
Sure, you know, they have them wrapped around the railings of their houses, all mm -hmm. those leaves. And for sure, I'm, I'm um, let's see if I can show, no, I don't have anything right here into decorating, but um, centerpieces, you know, leaves around a candle in the middle mm -hmm. of a table, really are very festive. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you can't get them here because they have pine cones. If you're in the north of Israel, you can get pine cones. <laughs> well, I could collect some leaves for you and send them to you to Israel. <laughs> ah, I was just recently in Asheville. I can send you a leaf from Asheville. Yeah. We can all send you leaves from all different places. Florida, not so much. <laughs> I can send you a dead palm tree. I mean, dead palm. <laughs> I'm in the same. I'm in the same place as Dr. Walker, and she's hearing this conversation and laughing. Oh no! <laughs> we in the town you're in, right? One of the gardens around the building. They're green all year, but we have apples that on the ground that you can crunch. <laughs> Do you have those little berries, those orange berry bushes that come out in the autumn? Um, like that in Israel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I, um, I have a lot of, uh, I have um, a window that overlooks the um, Haifa Bay in the northern Israel. So during the day, I have a wonderful view, and at night I have all the lights, you know, the uh, port and so forth. And on that window, I've been growing orchids because we get that kind of light that's good for orchids. So um, that's my garden since we've moved into this place. <laughs> I'll put some photos maybe and show you some one time. <clears throat> That's one thing to do is to share photos. Patricia, mm -hmm. you were talking about that, that we can do on Zoom. Sharing photos or videos as well. Right. We're going to send Marilyn some leaves. I do that. <laughs> yeah, I can send, I, I'm going to send you some videos I took of driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh, that'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. It's beautiful there in the autumn. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But we'll keep talking and being creative on some of the topics that we are. So please continue to tune in on Thursdays at noon Eastern Standard Time. We usually have interesting conversations and you are more than welcome to join anybody who is listening. Thank you for participating, our great speakers. Eileen, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Patricia, you too. Marilyn, thank you so much all. See you. Bye. See you Bye. Nice see you. See, see you, you next too. week.